after the exercise. Uh, just a quick thing on uh, carbohydrates versus fat. Um, between, uh, between walking and jogging, you would consume a higher percentage of your calories as fat with which activity? Higher percentage of the calories that you would burn walking or jogging? Be walking. But what about total calories burned? It would actually be higher jogging because your overall metabolic rate is higher. Even though you're shifting more towards carbohydrate as a fuel in jogging and you aren't walking, you would still burn more, car more calories as fat. Job. Okay, muscle metabolic adaptations that improve VO2 max. If you remember the last class we had, we talked about things you could do to improve VO2 max. There are cardiovascular factors and pulmonary factors maybe that influence VO2 max. But what about muscle metabolic changes that improve VO2 max? What are some adaptations over a 12 week training time? Your VO2 max goes up. What are some things that could happen in your muscle? cause that to happen. What if I said list four of them? Could you list four right now? That's a good short answer question. List four muscle metabolic adaptations that would improve VO2 max with chronic training. What if you made more mitochondria? Yes. Okay, increasing mitochondrial density. Increased capillaries. Increased capillary density would do it too. Oxygen gets to the mitochondria easier, more easily. What about the enzyme levels themselves within the mitochondria? Remember I had the graphs of those last class? Citrate synthase, succinate dehydrogenase, I showed you those went up between untrained and highly trained people. Okay, so those enzymes could increase. What else? What helps get oxygen from the capillary to the mitochondria? Myoglobin, you can store more of that. Some of the other ones. What if I converted some fast twitch Bs to fast twitch As? Would that potentially be an adaptation that would do it? Yes. That would do it. Okay, and there are a couple more. If you look in your uh, if you look in your notes, I've got a box there. Anytime I put something in a box, sometimes I do it just to highlight things, but a lot of times those are things to remember. Right. Okay, questions about energy systems. Is this okay? Helpful? All right, uh, what's the byproduct of deriving ATP from the glycolytic energy system? Lactic acid, that's the byproduct. Find lactate threshold, we already did. Uh, we already did that one, list three physiologic factors that can cause EPOC. Uh, we've already done that. And then don't forget, on the there's a lab exam set of questions. Uh, that'll be, if you look in your syllabus, it'll be the ones that you've already turned in. Uh, so this lab would be graphing and then muscular strength. And there's one or two, sometimes three questions on them. They're ne they'll never be calculate this variable or draw this graph. It'll always be something with assumptions or limitations or the principle of measurement uh, involved with the lab. Any questions? All right. Well, thanks for coming. Hope that was helpful. Um, I think uh, for the the next two tests uh, in particular, I think you find these review sessions to be even more helpful for exam two and exam three. This one we kind of covered a lot of different stuff just a little bit. What happens with the next test is cardiac and pulmonary primarily. And so we go a lot more in depth on those two particular physiological systems. Uh, so there's a, a greater, here we're just trying to scratch the surface. We go a lot deeper on those. And I think most people find those review sessions to be helpful. All right? Okay, again, I'll be, um, I'll be there in the SRC about a half hour before the test. If you have any questions, email. I'll try to respond as, as quickly as I can. If it helps, we'll try to see if we can upload this today, this video. There you go. All right? Thank you. All right.